Hi guys, it's Tanya and this is the fifth episode of Project DIM. Today we're going to talk about refugees. After Russia started its invasion of Ukraine 24th of February, over 14 million border crossings from Ukraine to other countries were recorded as of October 2022. Most of refugees fled to Poland. 90% of Ukrainian refugees are women and children. Ukrainian men, aged 18 to 60 years old, are banned from leaving the country. And today we're going to hear three different stories, friends of mine, who've been forced to leave their homes. Hi, Sasha. Hello. Yeah, long time didn't see you. I have a couple questions for you. Where did you live before the war? I used to live in Odessa, but uh, last year uh, I moved to Kharkiv with my husband and uh, I still, uh, my business and my parents uh, are located in Odessa. Can you describe the morning of 24th of February? How did you find out about the war? Um, on the evening, uh, the day before, uh, my friends and uh, I were celebrating event uh, in Kharkiv and on my way back home I noticed that uh, there were no electricity in city and I saw a lot of soldiers in city. Uh, I was afraid and uh, I started driving faster to my home and uh, then I returned home. Um, I read news about Kharkiv iPod. Uh, it was closed. Uh, I tried to calm down and fell asleep uh, but a uh, few hours uh, later, I heard uh, the no noise of explosion and I woke up quickly and went to my window and I saw fire. Oh, so it was next to your apartment? You literally yes. see the fire from your apartment? Yes, because we live uh, near airport. You are the first one who tell me that You've seen the soldiers the day before, 23rd. Yes, yes. Because all the people before. was in shock morning 24, but you are the first one who uh, start to uh, suspect something the day before. For those people who don't know, this is the east of the country and it's super close. Kharkiv is like the next to Russian Belgorod. That's why people there like know faster than the rest of Ukraine what is going on. And when exactly you decided to move to evacuate? Uh, we decided to leave Ukraine at that moment because I was very scared and because Kharkiv is located near uh, Russia and uh, it was very uh, hard for me and for my husband. But uh, honestly speaking, we decided to leave Ukraine about one week before and uh, we both take it uh, and uh, take my clothes and so on. But uh, thank you uh, for of February, we wanted to get married uh, and uh, but Russia. Wow. Okay, okay. Another shocking news <laughs> I didn't mm -hmm. know about. Okay. Uh, at five o'clock, uh, we uh, go to. Uh, we went to our car and uh, started driving. We chose uh, Spain because uh, climate is similar for Ukraine and um, in Barcelona. Uh, sea and mountains and um, in addition uh, a lot of our friends moved to Spain. About maybe two months ago uh, my parents uh, went in Spain too. Yeah, I just want to tell that Sasha's parents are living in the same uh, town with my parents. They are very good friends. Both our uh, dads are football players. So we have <laughs> our families actually have a lot of in common and I know Sasha like probably all her life. Yeah, this family is very close to mine and we're like trying to keep in touch uh, through all those years. Tell me, what is the most difficult part to live in Spain? Oh, uh, for me, most difficult is uh, firstly this uh, Spanish language, but uh, now I use my English, uh, I'm studying now uh, English, and uh, secondly is medicine, because uh, in Spain to do anything it's uh, so long, uh, Spanish uh, people uh, every time uh, spend fiesta. It's and uh, thirdly, maybe for me as a business owner uh, is uh, bad service in medicine, in hospital, in restaurant. Is it difficult to be a distance boss during this time? Like you're still controlling, you're still ruling your beauty salons and for so long time no because uh, when i moved to kharkiv uh, i try uh, this uh, business it was like a, it was like a yeah. like a preparation for you yes and uh, now it's uh, not difficult for me 
many Ukrainians who move to Europe, it's very bad service in Europe. Doesn't matter what country it is. Restaurants, beauty salons. Before, people who never travel, they like never even think about it. They thought like, oh, in Ukraine, everything is so bad. Complaining about beauty salons, like starting with the manicure, finishing with some, I don't know, uh, plates you get in the restaurant and stuff. And now people start to like uh, appreciate what they had before. I would not say it's late, but like they start to really appreciate. Like, are you guys planning to go back to Ukraine? Uh, of course, uh, I want to back home because uh, we have apartment, uh, because uh, uh, I have a business in Odessa. Um, and in general, uh, I don't know about my future. It's very hard. Apartment in Kharkiv, but uh, now this city is very dangerous. And uh, after we win, uh, we'll go to Ukrainian, of course. I like this, you know, like there is no hesitation. After we win, there is no question about it. Like every <laughs> Ukrainian, like, oh, after victory, I'm going to do that. I'm going to plan, uh, I'm planning to do this. Like people no, no. know for sure. Yeah. Sasha, thank you for this short interview. I was very happy to see you. Say greetings thank to your parents, to your husband. To your Thank brother, you. yeah, uh, and I hope that very soon we will see each other. Doesn't matter where, but uh, of course I want to meet you in Ukraine, in like our native Odessa. Yes, um, yeah. <laughs> Sasha is a shy person, that's why during the interview she didn't mention anything about her volunteer activities. But there is something to show off, because the help provided by Sasha and her husband is very important. These people donate a lot of money every day, buy equipment for the front line, buy water for the needs of Mykolaiv, which has been living without a normal water supply since April, after the Russian shelled the waterworks. Help with the purchase of medicine. Sasha's salon woman space donated some supplies for refugees from other cities. They repeatedly helped me and my sister with our fundraisings. We are very grateful for that. And at the beginning of the war, Sasha's parents gave their car for free for needs of territorial defense.